Hey there, this is Motion VFX Academy, and today Nick is going to run through how to create a new project in Final Cut Pro. In Final Cut, you assemble clips together in a timeline to make your story. In order to work within the timeline, we must first create a project. In this movie, we'll learn a few different ways projects can be created, how we can navigate between projects, as well as changing project settings. Like our assets, projects are stored within events that are contained within your library. Now, in order for us to create our first project, let's go to the file menu and choose new project. By default, we're going to get a dialog box asking us to name our project, which I'll call romance, and then which event we want to store it in. In the last movie, we actually created two events. I'll choose day one. I'll leave the starting time code as zero. And the most important note is that our project is going to be based on the first video clip that we bring inside. Let's choose OK to accept these automatic settings. I'll select this clip here within the browser. In order to see the settings of our clip, before we bring it in, I'll head to the inspector and notice at the top under the info inspector, this is an Ultra HD clip at 2997. For the time being, I'll just drag and drop into the Final Cut timeline. Editing is going to be a discussion for the next movie, where we'll get into detail about different ways that we can bring in clips. If I scroll up inside my library, here is my romance project. I'll select it and notice in the info inspector, it matches the settings of my Ultra HD 2997 clip. Now, sometimes we want projects to be a different frame size or frame rate from the clips we bring into the timeline. One example of this would be setting up an HD project for our Ultra HD clips so that we can scale them up without any quality loss to double their size. Now, in order to do this, I'll head back to the file menu where I'll create a new project. I'll call the project scale up and place it within the day one event, but now choose to use some custom settings. Under video, you have several settings that you can choose from depending on the type of media that you're using, not to mention 8K video, 360 VR, and vertical and square video for social media formats. I'll choose 1080p HD at the 2997 frame rate to match my clips and leave the rendering at Apple ProRes 422. I'll press OK. Now that project here, the scale up appears in the timeline and I'll grab this shot and drag it into the timeline. You'll notice that with the shot selected in the browser, it is an Ultra HD clip at 2997. But if I go to the scale up project, you'll notice because I used custom settings, it's 1920 by 1080. It doesn't appear that this shot is double the size of the actual project. If you select your clip and head to the video inspector, going to the very bottom, you'll notice that spatial conform is set to fit. So your clips are going to try to fit the raster of your project. And if you'd like to switch this to see the actual size, switch the default from fit to none. Inside the viewer, I'll select the transform settings. And at the top of the viewer, I am going to change the percent to 50%. And with this Final Cut Overscan feature that's toggled on, we can see the entire size of our project. Now, just to mention that we are going to go over transform settings as well as some more features within the viewer in detail in a later movie. But for now, I'll use this scaling advantage on the transform clip, moving it here to the side and press done to take advantage of that 4K raster. And also in the viewer, fit my clip to the window. Now we can also change most of our project settings at a later time if required. If I select the scale up project within the browser and look at the info inspector that's already revealed to the right, you'll notice a modify button. Here I can actually change the video resolution, but not the frame rate, as well as take advantage of other rendering and audio features. I will leave this project as is and press cancel. Now, lastly, we can move between the two projects that we've loaded inside our timeline. You'll notice to the left of the scale up project that's currently open, is an arrow which will go back in timeline history, revealing our romance project. Now that we've gone back in time, there's an arrow to the right, which will allow us to go back to our scale up project. To the right of the project name is a downward arrow, which will allow us to either duplicate our project, reveal our project in the background, see our project properties, and even close all of the other timelines or the existing project that we have open. I'll choose to close all other timelines. 
Now let's review all this. I'll head back up to my browser where we can see that if I select the day one event, projects are stored within them. We can easily create new projects from the file menu where we can use automatic settings, which will base our project on the first clip that we bring inside or define our own project settings based on using custom settings. I'll cancel out of this project window and also mention that we can navigate between multiple projects in our timeline by using the go forward and backward in timeline history arrows that are displayed. Last but not least, if I click the downward arrow to the right of the scale up to show my project properties, here's where we can modify our actual project settings minus the frame rate if required.